In our ASP.NET Core MVC series, we had a discussion on what is MVC architecture and we had separate sessions on model, view and controller. Let's continue to work on the same application. If you want to go through previous sessions, then you can visit the playlist ASP.NET Core MVC. You will find all the videos over there. If you remember, in our last session, we had created this tutorial model. Then we had displayed that data on the tutorials view. And this is how our application looks. I'll click on tutorial. See, this is how we had displayed the data. In our last session, I had promised you two things. One is to show you how to pass data from controller to the view in different ways. The second thing is to show you how to create the data in a proper way or how to deal with the data in a proper way. In today's session, I'll take up the first point and show you how to pass the data from controller to the view in multiple ways. In next session, I'll address this one. To pass the data from controller to view, you have two different approaches. One is passing the data as weakly typed data. Other one is passing it as strongly typed data. If we prefer to go for weakly typed data, then we have again two different options. One is using view data and other option is using view pack. If we prefer to go for strongly typed data, then we have the option to send it as view model. What we have used in our last session is view data. Let's start with view data. Few important things to know about view data are you can use view data like a dictionary and it's of the type view data dictionary. Very important thing is here we use the string keys to store and retrieve data. As we have already discussed, data is stored as weakly typed objects. If you look at the code, here we are creating a list of tutorial objects. Next, we are storing this data inside view data using the key tutorials. Our job at the controller is done. Next, we have to access this data from a view. We are at the index view of tutorial module. If you look at the first statement, we are declaring a variable and accessing data from view data using tutorials key and storing it here. Do you know what are we doing here? Here we are specifying the type of the data that we have stored inside the view data dictionary. But why are we doing this? What we did is called as typecasting. When using view data, we should remember one thing. That is, if we are storing string data, then there is no need for this typecasting while accessing this data. But if we are storing some other type of data, in our case, we are storing a list of tutorial objects. In such case, while retrieving that data, we need to do the typecasting. But why we have to do that? The reason is, as I already mentioned in the beginning, view data is a collection of weakly typed objects. And from the beginning, I'm talking about weakly typed data and strongly typed data. What is it? Let's understand that. Strongly typed data means data will have explicitly defined type. But weakly type data will not have explicitly defined type. In case of strongly typed data, type is resolved at compile time. But in case of weakly type data, type is resolved dynamically at runtime. If you look at this view data, you will understand this loosely typed concept. See, here view data does not know what type of data this is storing view data only knows that whenever somebody asks me to give a data with the key tutorials i should deliver it that's all it knows it does not know anything about the type of the data it is storing that's the reason here we are typecasting and we are clear with what is weakly type data you will understand strongly type data when we discuss view model now i'll store a string value and show you i'll say view data I'll use title as key and this is going to be my message. I'll save the changes. Again, I'll come back to the index page. Here, I'll use h1 tag and I'll say view data of title. Here, I'm using title key to access the data. See, we are not getting an error. See, here it is. We have retrieved the string from view data without any casting. Now I'll show you different way to use view data. 
For time being, I'll comment it out. I will declare a property inside controller class. Prop tap tap. This is easy way to create a property. Here, this is going to be of type string. I'll use this title as the property name. Okay. Now, now what I'll do? I'll use view data property. That's it. This works the same way as we used view data. Now what will happen? This title is going to be used as a key. Instead of assigning the value this way, what I will do? I'll simply assign this string to title. Here we don't have to do any change. See, everything is working as before. The only change is we have declared this title property and decorated with view data attribute. Shall we move to next option? That is view bag. First, let's understand few facts about view bag. The first thing is, as you already know, it's a weakly typed collection of data. Then, as per MSDN, the view bag is a wrapper around view data that provides dynamic properties for the underlying view data collection. We will come back to this point. Then, another important thing is, dynamic properties are used to store and retrieve data. We will work with an example, then you will understand all these points. See, in our example, we have used view data. What I will do, I'll comment it out. Instead, I'll say view bag dot tutorials. Now, here, what we have to understand is tutorials is the dynamic property. Simply right click. Let's go to the definition and see view bag. See, you can find view bag inside controller class because we are inheriting from the controller class we are able to access this view bag look at the type of view bag view bag is of dynamic type then what is this dynamic type in c sharp whenever we use dynamic type its type is checked at the runtime not at the compile time you can choose whatever name for your property but while accessing you should remember to access with the same name Earlier, we had used view data. I'll comment it out. Instead of view data, this time I'll say view bag. View bag dot tutorials. The difference between view bag and view data is whenever we, whenever you use view data, you should do the type casting. In case of view bag, we don't have to do the type casting. Which we can simply access it with the property name. See, this is working without any issues. View bag is a loosely typed collection of data because we are not specifying type here. Our second point says view bag is a wrapper around view data. Let's understand that. This means internally view data and view bag refer to the same underlying view data collection. I'll give you an example. Let's do one thing. Let's store few more information inside view data. This time I'm using name as the key. I'll say all about .NET. I'll take h2 tag and this time what I will do, I'll show you the magic now. I'll say view bag dot name. Don't get confused. Here I'm storing this name inside view data. Here I'm retrieving that name using view bag. See, we are able to retrieve the text. Let's look at one more example. See here we are storing this tutorials inside view bag. Let's see if we will be able to access this using view data. Let's again come back to our view. Here earlier I had commented it out and used view bag. I'll comment this one and I'll try to access this using view data. As of now there are no errors. I'll save the changes. Let's refresh it. See we are not getting any error. It is working as earlier. This proves the fact that view bag is a wrapper around view data. Thus, both of them can be used interchangeably and internally they both refer to the same collection. I hope you are clear with this thing. Please remember, this is not the best practice. It's always good to stick with one thing. If you want to go with view bag, then please store and retrieve using the view bag. If you want to go for view data, use the same thing while storing and retrieving. Shall we move to the next one? Now let's see how to use strongly typed data. View model is nothing complicated. If you ask me what is view model, 
then in simplest terms model that is used to pass the data from controller to view is called as view model and as we already discussed this approach passes strongly typed data to the view let's see how to use this in our example if we take the same example here we have tutorial model if i pass this tutorial model to the view then this will be our view model let's say i don't want to pass this model i want to create separate model that will have this model and as well as some other extra information that is needed by the view then that will be our view model we will see both the cases let's see how to pass this tutorial model to the view and make and consider this as a view model here at the tutorial controller we use this view method to pass the model to the view i don't want to confuse you i'll comment everything i'll create a new model i'll name it as new model here i have filled up with the data if we are passing model to the view in stop using this version of view method we should use overloaded version of view method which takes the model i'll say return c we are using view method to pass the model to the view controller class has got different overloads for view method in our previous case we were using this version of view method now now when we want to pass the model to the view we are using this overloaded version of view method here i'll clear everything the, now this becomes strongly typed view to specify the model that is being used by this view we should use at model directive with this we should specify the model that we are going to use this is the model that will be used by this view now we know how to pass the model from controller to the view at the view side we have specified which model is going to be used by this view now the question is how to retrieve the data from the particular model i don't want to loop through the list to access the model data we should say at model here we have intelligence support also i'll show you if i say at model then intelligence gives me intelligence gives me the suggestion to choose the properties let's move to the second case having separate view models for some reason you don't want to use this as a view model you want to have separate view model with this information as well as some extra information for example you want to have sub you want to have title in the view model then what we can do we can create separate view model folder we can name it as view models we can create a separate model by name tutorial view model add class now we can define the properties here here i am adding two properties one is of the type tutorial model and other one is of the type string i'll comment it out our view model is ready and we are returning that view model at the view side we have to update our model directive this is our model this is our view model we have specified it now we are getting error this is because now id is not inside this model id is inside model then tutorial then comes the id we have to we have to make little bit of the change we can access our title also i'll say save the changes what we are displaying here is from our new view model with this we have covered all the different ways to pass data from controller to view now the question arrives when to when to go for weakly typed data on and when to go for strongly typed data the choice is up to you the the best practice is if you have a small amount of data then you can go for view data or view back if you want to send large amount of data then view model would be the best approach to choose with this we have come to end of today's session i hope you are clear with all the three concepts see you soon in the next video thank you